Right, so Joe Biden has come up with a three-point plan for peace between Israel and Hamas, which is, of course, getting a fair bit of media attention, as you might imagine, as it should. But as it turns out, in a not very prominently discussed aspect of this story, a throwaway comment almost in Sky News' coverage of the story, Biden is very much not acting alone here. Though getting all the credit depends on the source material you read, because Another man is in the shadows involved in this plan, and it is a guy who has had designs on Gaza himself for a while, and is frankly pretty much the last person on earth you'd want to see get involved there right now, because apparently one of the people Joe Biden has been involved with to develop this latest plan for peace is a man about as welcome on the political scene these days as Nappy Rash, a certain Anthony Charles Linton Blair. Right, so genocide Joe Biden, still trying to rescue his reputation whilst remaining consistently on Israel's side, has apparently come up with a new peace plan and when he announced it apparently took people by surprise. Nobody knew something was being cooked up here, nobody knew this was coming. And just days after Hamas had apparently told mediators that without the Israeli assault on Gaza being ended, there could be no more discussions from them in this direction, though the media handily admitted to say that this is following Netanyahu's refusal to back a peace deal that Hamas had actually agreed to. Though that said, they likely only did so to wrong foot Israel and clearly succeeded, but that covered that in another video. I won't cover that one again here. This time it is a stripped down version, pretty much of previous plans, broken down into three fairly straightforward explanatory stages, though more detail will likely follow going into these publicly, depending on well, how it gets received, I suppose. The first stage is a six-week ceasefire, during which the IDF will withdraw from all populated areas of Gaza. The second stage would involve an exchange of captives and Palestinian prisoners, as well as a surge, surge it's being called, that is the word used, of humanitarian aid into all parts of the Gaza Strip. And the third phase would be to make the ceasefire permanent and facilitate the reconstruction of the Gaza Strip, decimated as it has been, 60% of clinics, schools, university building, buildings and places of worship destroyed by the IDF since October 7th. That is, on the face of it, an awful lot for Israel and Netanyahu to swallow. Too much, I imagine, frankly. His government, I would think, would almost certainly collapse over this. There's no way the likes of Bezalel Smotrich or Itamar Ben-Gavir would accept this deal, in my view. Not a chance. But the longer Israel are made to look like the ones blocking any semblance of a ceasefire and an end to this genocide, the worst things are going to get for them. Massive protests are again happening throughout Israel and notably in Tel Aviv demanding Netanyahu go, demanding his resignation, though still completely ignores them because power being all he has ever been concerned about. Hamas themselves have reacted more positively. That is the word that has in fact been used in reaction to the proposals from them. Some in the Israeli government have also been pretty positive about it too, such as Benny Gantz, a coalition partner of Netanyahu's Likud party, and importantly, the opposition leader Yair Lapid has pledged support for it too, in case Ben Gavir and co won't back it. So in theory, it would pass a vote at the Knesset then, even if Netanyahu's government collapsed subsequently. But surely, surely that shouldn't be the priority. But again, when everything is all about Netanyahu and how to keep himself in power, of course it is. It matters not a bit, I shouldn't think. But he will look more and more a pariah, and frankly, if Biden doesn't at that point do something different and not keep acquiescing to this genocidal madman who has boxed himself in with this war in Gaza. He's going to look ever weaker in an election year he's facing himself. Not a good place to be, but he'll have nobody to blame but himself. However, all this said and done, Biden has not been acting alone as this excerpt from Sky News's coverage that caught my eye revealed, but might not have been picked up by too many others. Tobias Elwood, the Conservative candidate and former Defence Committee chair, has been speaking to Sky News about this evening's news conference from the White House. He said the announcement from the US President was very welcome indeed, highlighting Washington's analysis that Hamas was no longer capable of carrying out an attack like 7th of October. The deal has come together thanks to the work of the US Secretary of State, as well as people like Sir Tony Blair and Foreign Secretary Lord David Cameron, behind the scenes, Mr Elwood said. The Tory candidate said what was revealed today was the most viable plan I've seen put on the table that has the potential to move forward. Asked if he believed Benjamin Netanyahu had been sidelined, Mr Elwood said the Israeli Prime Minister was very much involved, but that his future was a big question. Tony Blair and David Cameron behind the scenes. 
Just look at Iraq and Libya to understand why neither of those people belong within a country mile of anything else to do with peace in the Middle East. But Blair especially, having become a peace envoy in the Middle East for the so-called Quartet, that being the UN, the EU, the US and Russia, following his time as Prime Minister and following his involvement in that illegal war in Iraq that people have for decades now been quite rightly asking why the hell is that man still free, still intervening in world events and not in the Hague where he damn well belongs. He is the epitome of getting away with it and still he won't just have the common decency to disappear into obscurity. Cameron has, as usual, had his finger in the pulse on all of this, as despite apparently being involved in this deal behind the scenes as well, he's on record as having said that Hamas must accept this deal that they're putting forward, forgetting that they actually did accept the last one, even now when trying to broker peace, he, is, he has to take Israel's side. It bodes well, doesn't it? How about you stick to pigs and leave politics to others, Dave? But worse than Cameron easily has to be Blair. Yet another of his all too rare interventions here. Now you can argue, well, hang on a minute here, Damon, does it really matter who is involved if peace comes out of this in the end? Let's look at Tony Blair and his role in the Good Friday Agreement in Northern Ireland if we're talking about peace. And this plan is not a bad one, surely. To which I'd say, sure, OK, let's assume Israel go for this too. I can't imagine why they would, although they've said Netanyahu was involved, but it would finish because it would finish Netanyahu. He's hanging on to power by his fingertips. But that said, he has sent negotiators back in to talk about this deal. Thought he was involved, they said. He sent negotiators in. But he's still bleating about the need to eliminate Hamas. Still putting that in front of, as he clearly has been all along, the rescue of hostages. Because he's never cared about them at all. For sure, let's, let's entertain the notion that this all goes ahead and the plan is carried out and peace reigns. What exactly was in it for Tony Blair to ever get involved to begin with then? This is not a guy who has got as rich as he has off the back of his time in power by doing something for nothing. What is he after? What is he up to? Well, it isn't just here and now that Blair has been intervening. He's been opining in the media for the last eight months now on and off regarding the situation in Israel and Gaza. Last November, for example, Blair had a piece put out in The Guardian saying he was open to help if needed to end the growing crisis at that point between Israel and Gaza. They did say whilst also denying other reports that he had already been offered a specific role in matters there. Well, what be that then, Damo? Well, Blair maintains an office in Israel from his peace envoy days, and in that role would have built up contacts throughout the Middle East. And in light of that, it was reported in the Times of Israel, around the same time as that Guardian article, that Blair was offered the role of Gaza humanitarian coordinator. Israel's idea of humanitarianism, as this excerpt implies, Israel is seeking to install former British Prime Minister Tony Blair as a humanitarian coordinator for the Gaza Strip, according to a report on Sunday. Out of a desire to improve the humanitarian situation inside the Palestinian enclave and reduce international pressure as it continues to wage its war on Hamas. The Ynet news outlet, citing unnamed senior officials, said Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu hopes to leverage Blair's experience as former envoy to the region for the Middle East Quartet to temper international concerns over the civilian cost of Israel's campaign in Gaza. So according to them, they hoped Blair would help offset the condemnation from so much innocent death and destruction that has rightfully been thrown Israel's direction. But he does appear to have experience on that, as a million dead Iraqis seem to evidently demonstrate. He didn't bite, though. He didn't take the role. At least not then. Even he perhaps knew that this there was no selling this particular brand of snake oil but clearly he's still been lurking around and could he be being lined up for such a role after the genocide in Gaza finally does end? Well it's not the only consideration Israel have given to Blair. Last December they were reportedly tapping him up to head an initiative of theirs to relocate Palestinians to other countries that might consider rehoming them so they can take over the strip for themselves despite forced displacement, ethnic cleansing of civilians very much being a war crime. Well, Blair and war crimes, it might not shock you to therefore hear that according to Israel's Channel 12, he did indeed meet with Netanyahu over this. Went to Israel in the midst of the genocide to discuss such a thing, apparently. Think on that what you will. But again, he didn't actually end up taking the, taking the bait in the end. Yet now here he is involved with Biden's peace plan. And in light of that and his other apparent actions during this Gaza atrocity, his all too rare interventions, you really do have to ask yourself, what is in it for Tony Blair? Because it seems that unless there is something in it for him, he doesn't get involved. 
By 2014, Blair had been Middle East Peace Envoy, for example, for the quartet for seven years. And in all of that time, he'd visited Gaza just twice. And Hamas were always suspicious of him because he was so close to Israeli figures. If he's being lined up for any kind of a role involving Gaza, it will almost certainly be in Israel's interest much more than in Palestine's. And actually, if you want a particular point in his prime ministership to point to that can be regarded as his downfall, his refusal to condemn the atrocities Israel carried out in Lebanon in the summer of 2006 that ended up leading to the Gordon Brown soft coup that ushered him out soon afterwards would be pretty much it. A Labour leader incapable of challenging Israel. Sound familiar? Now I covered Blair's involvement with the potential ethnic cleansing of Gaza six months ago in this video recommendation here if you'd care to get more details on that particular side of this story and I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers folks.